हेलो एवरीवन आई एम श्रीनिवास पीजीटी फिजिकल साइंस फ्रॉम टीएमआरएस एम इन द सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोस आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग यू द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स एंड द पीरियोडिक टेबल नाउ इन दिस वीडियो लेट अस नो अबाउट द नीड ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन व्हाई टू क्लासिफाई द एलिमेंट्स इफ यू डोंट क्लासीफाई द एलिमेंट्स वॉट एपन्स नेक्स्ट एंड ऑल्सो early attempts made by scientists to classify the elements different scientists have put forward different theories and different uh, laws to explain the classification and they have given different different periodic tables so among them who are the earlier one who put forward their theories so now entering into our topic need of classifying elements what is the need to classify the elements see before that let us see the definition of classification classification is the act of forming things into a class or group according to some common relations see based on the common relations see based on our age we will be classifying the human beings into children adults and old age people the based on the age group because age is a common factor for them so the people who are uh, around uh, less than 15 or uh, less than 12 will be considered as children and uh, human beings more than 15 and around 40 will be considered as adults and who are 50 and above will be considered as old age people so in the same manner there will be a some common relation so here based on that common relation only we will be classifying the elements so now coming to the point what is the need in order to know that let's go to the historical point during 1660s only 13 elements were known to human beings and by the end of 18th century 24 elements were known and by 1865 about 63 elements were known and by 1940s one or eight elements were known of which 91 are natural and 17 are man made and now at present there are 118 elements out of which 94 are natural and 24 are synthetic see to memorize all these elements and to study all the properties and to remember all the properties it will be very difficult for us so classification is must without classifying them we can't memorize them just imagine a A stationery shop. All the stationery items: pens, pencils, books, notebooks, charts, drawing charts, color, color, color pencils, sketches. All different kinds of uh, things will be there. So, what a shopkeeper does, he will classify them. He will be putting all the notebooks of a particular cost at a particular place and higher cost of notebooks at a particular place. in this way he will be classifying all the stationery items which are there in his shop and he will be putting them according to the order without classifying them can he give an item when a customer asks just by pouring all the stationery items which are there with him in the middle of the shop can he pick up that particular item it's very difficult in the same manner without classifying the elements also it is very difficult for us to memorize and to study the properties okay this is the need to classify elements and because of which since many years scientists have been working vigorously to classify the elements and at last a modern periodic table was given now let us enter into the atoms made by early atoms made by different scientists doberner's law of triad here german chemist doberner has arranged the elements available in his time into groups with three elements in each he has made group of elements with how many three elements when and he noticed that when these elements with similar properties are arranged 
in descent in ascending order of their atomic weights the atomic weight of middle element is average of atomic weights of first and third elements this is called Doberner's law of triad so whatever the elements which are available in his time he has made them into he has arranged them according to the according to the ascending order of their atomic weights and he has noticed that among the three one two three elements the third or the second element atomic weight is equal to the arithmetic mean of the first and third elements and this law is applicable only to the elements which were available in his time and this is not available to the elements at present now let us see these triads see here these are arranged according to the groups group a this is group a with lithium sodium and potassium see in this group the the second element is what sodium sodium's atomic weight is 23 and this is the second element and the first element lithium atomic weight 7 and potassium atomic weight is 39 so if you take the arithmetic mean of lithium and potassium it is 23 which is exactly equal to the atomic weight of sodium so here in this way he has arranged the elements into triads and he has given different groups group b group c group d group e group b is having calcium strontium barium and here the arithmetic mean of these two calcium and barium is 88 which is almost equal to strontium so in this way he has categorized the elements into triads Doberiner's attempts gave a clue that atomic weights are related with physical properties of elements so this is even though this theory is not successful but this theory has given few important ideas that the physical properties of elements will be based on the atomic weights now coming to the drawbacks see this theory has some drawbacks let us see all the elements at that time could not arrange could not be arranged in the triad forms see they could not be arranged in the form of triads all the elements which were available in his time could not be arranged in the form of triads and this law failed for both low mass and higher mass containing elements so this is also one of the drawback and uh, coming to the important one is in case of elements like fluorine chlorine and bromine fluorine's atomic mass is 19 bromine's atomic mass is 80 if you take the average of this 19 plus 80 99 that almost equal to 100 and uh, mean arithmetic mean is 50 but that is not equal to chlorine's atomic mass which is 35.5 see 50 is very far away from 35.5 we can consider 1 or plus or minus 1 but it is very far so in this way this triad has failed and in the same manner manganese chromium and iron see if you take the uh, arithmetic mean of manganese and uh, iron it is 55.5 but coming to chromium it is its atomic mass is 52 so in this way this theory couldn't explain all the triads all the elements and their properties clearly next attempt was made by newland newland he is a british chemist he has arranged the elements which were available in his time in the ascending order of atomic weights and he observed that these elements they fall into a pattern of repetition of properties at regular intervals he noticed that every eighth element every eighth element represents in its properties with that of the starting element so whatever the element with which we start in this Newland's periodic table the eighth element will be showing the same properties with, our, with that of the element from where we have started so this is what is the observation made by Newland and he has stated it as a law he has compared this with the musical note in the Indian uh, music system we have uh, musical notes sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni, sa. 
See, these are the eight musical notes. See, the first musical notes are the first musical notes are is a repetition of the eighth musical note again, sir. So in the same manner, see, I'm starting with lithium here. Next, the second element is G, that is beryllium, the old symbol of beryllium G. Next, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and the eighth element is sodium. So here, lithium and sodium, both are metals. That means they are showing some similarities. So in, the, in this way, Newland has observed that every eighth element, now again, we'll start from sodium or we'll start from we'll start from fluorine let us start from fluorine see fluorines this is the first element second element is sodium third is magnesium fourth is aluminium fifth is silicon sixth is potassium sorry phosphorus sixth is sulfur and seventh is again chlorine so fluorine chlorine both are having similar similarities in their properties in this way the elements are showing similarities in the properties in a regular pattern with a regular intervals. This is what Newland has observed and he has arranged all the available 56 elements into a particular uh, a group of uh, into a seven groups 56 elements into seven groups and even though this seems to be somewhat successful but this is also having few limitations coming to the limitations in few groups two elements are fitted into same slot example cobalt and nickel see here if you take cobalt and nickel in this cobalt and nickel are fitted into the same slot that means here 22 atomic ma atomic uh, number is given to both elements so it's a drawback he couldn't arrange these two elements in different places so this is also one of the drawback as a slot will be there for only a single element but here he has given a slot the same 22 atomic number is given for cobalt and nickel which is one of the drawback and next few dissimilar element dissimilar property containing elements were fixed in same group example cobalt nickel palladium and platinum let us look into this see here cobalt nickel palladium platinum and iridium see these are actually metals these were placed in a group this group see this group is having fluorine chlorine bromine iodine which are actually not metals these are more electronegative elements and their metals are electropositive elements which are completely different in their properties in this way this theory also failed in arranging the elements in a particular manner so coming to the third point this table is restricted only to 56 elements and didn't leave any space for the new elements see here there is no space in the whole period the whole table which was given by newland and all the 56 elements were fitted into this and there is no space for the upcoming or uh, new elements which are yet to be discovered so if a new element is discovered after this new land then scientists will not have any space where to put that element so this is also one of the drawback next linking periodicity of properties of elements with the periodicity found in music without considering similarities in chemical properties is also one of the drawback see here he didn't consider just he took the musical note just the octet uh, musical note and uh, according to that he has uh, gone arranging the elements without uh, noticing that there uh, there are dissimilarities and he just kept on arranging them and he has failed at last so these are the drawbacks of newland but even though these two theories are fa big failures but they have given some path to the next genera generations and so that they have understood 
how to classify the elements and how to arrange them according to the properties see here newland was the first scientist to assign to assign atomic numbers to the elements he is the first scientist to, ass to assign atomic numbers to the elements see in this way these are the two earlier attempts made by newland and doberiner in the next session in the next video let us learn about uh, the mendeleev's periodic table